make the mouse easier to use. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. You know, the mouse is kind of an underappreciated piece of technology. It really is. Uh, imagine for a while, if you will, just not having one. What would it take to do all of the things you do every day on your computer? And I think you would find that it is quite the little workhorse. But there are issues for many people where the mouse isn't as good as it could be. Maybe it's too small, maybe it's too fast, maybe it's too difficult. There are settings in Windows that will allow you to tailor much of the behavior of the mouse in ways that may help you use it more effectively. And I want to show you some of those settings right now. So we're over here in Windows 11. We'll right click on the start, click on settings and click on accessibility. In Windows 10, you'll find this also called ease of access in the settings app. Now, in this case, in Windows 11, we're going to click on mouse pointer and touch in the right hand pane. In Windows 10, you'll find mouse pointer in the left hand pane. We're going to continue with Windows 11 as our example, but almost all of these settings look very, very similar in the Windows 10 settings app. So we'll start with what I consider to be the most obvious, and that is size, mouse pointer size. This is something that you'll see it happen as soon as you take this and drag it. It's set to size one. If I drag it to the right, you can see my mouse pointer is getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the way to size 15. That's a bit much for me, <laughs> but if the mouse pointer size is of an issue for you where you have a hard time finding it, maybe setting it to something in between to make it easier for you to find is something worth doing doing. In that same vein, and this is often hidden, but if you click on mouse pointer style, you'll see that there are some options here as to what to make the mouse pointer look like. The default is the standard white pointer with a black outline. You can make the mouse pointer black. That may be easier for you to read. You can make the pointer what they call inverted. And what that is, is they're actually taking a look at what's underneath the mouse and inverting the mouse pointer. So if it's on top of something black, the, that piece of the mouse pointer turns white and so forth. Um, I don't find this particularly useful. You might. This last one does not mean make your mouse pointer green. It means make your mouse pointer whatever color you'd like. Green just happens to be their example, their recommended color, excuse me, lime. Uh, but you can make it some other color using their own color picker. If you wanted a, a nice red mouse, you could do that. I'll just hit done. And now you can see that my mouse over there is red. Uh, my preference, personal, I'm fine with the mouse pointer the way it is. But those are some very, very quick ways to make the mouse pointer itself more easy to find on the screen. So with that, we're going to make this go away and now click on related settings. Now we're currently in the accessibility settings. This actually takes you over to the devices settings for the mouse device. If you're a lefty, this is probably the first thing you already know to change. Left is the primary mouse button. If you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, you might find it more comfortable to make it the right mouse button. It simply swaps the two buttons. So whenever you're told to click the left mouse button, after changing the setting, you would click the right mouse button and vice versa. Mouse pointer speed controls how far the mouse pointer moves on the screen relative to how far you physically move the mouse on your desk. So you may have it move a lot on the screen for a little bit of motion, or you may do the reverse. My advice here is to experiment with this one on your machine. Like I said, it's one of the things that I do change based on the characteristics of the specific mouse and the specific machine that I happen to be using. It can vary fairly dramatically from machine to machine and from mouse to mouse. This is one of those things that can actually make the mouse significantly easier to use if you find that it's either moving too slowly or you're constantly overshooting wherever it is you're trying to click. Rolling the mouse wheel to scroll. Um, I love the mouse wheel. You can see I'm using it here. You can't see that I'm using a wheel, but I am. Um, you can have it scroll multiple lines at a time or one line at a time. So this is one line at a time. I don't think it's gonna make a difference for what I'm looking at here, but you can also specify how many lines to scroll at a time. Um, 
the large numbers don't necessarily make a lot of sense to me. But once again, this is something that is worth experimenting with. If you use the mouse wheel, you may find that there is a setting that is more comfortable or more natural for how you happen to use the mouse. Now, scrolling an inactive window when hovering over them, this is the, be the default behavior. And in order to show you what that really means, I'm going to fire up another window here um, and actually make it a little bit smaller to make the scrolling part. So you can see that even though the control panel, the settings app is the current application, I just clicked on it. If I hover the mouse over File Explorer and rotate my mouse wheel, that's what scrolls, right? It's not which is the active window, it's which one is my mouse happen to be over. Most people find that to be perhaps the most natural. If you turn that off, now I'm here in Settings app, and if I scroll, I can scroll over here, but if, if I'm over File Explorer, I'm not scrolling File Explorer, it's scrolling the active app. If I want to scroll in File Explorer, I have to actually make that the active application, and now the scroll will work once I click in that pane. Right. So that's a setting again. If you find yourself having trouble getting things to scroll the way or when you think they should, that's a setting to investigate. All right. But wait, as they say, there's more additional mouse settings. Now, this will actually look really familiar to anybody who's used Windows for a while because this is the old mouse settings dialog. I'm expecting most of these settings to migrate into the settings app. And you can see here that the very first one switch primary and secondary buttons. That's exactly what this switch is over here in the settings app. But there are other settings here that are not yet migrated there. They're available only in this advanced or additional mouse settings dialog. Double click speed is one that frustrates a lot of people. I'm comfortable with it because I know what to expect, but some people have trouble. Some people want the amount of time that it means for a double click to be recognized as a double click to be longer. They just don't naturally click fast enough for those two separate clicks to be recognized as a double click. This allows you to fine tune just exactly what Windows thinks is a double click. Click lock. This is an interesting one. So I've turned on click lock and what it boils down to, as the description says, is it's a way to simulate clicking and holding without needing to hold. Clicking and holding can be problematic for some people. So instead, here's what you do. You can obviously click on things and it'll be just fine as normal. But if I now click and hold, in my case, I'm just holding for a couple seconds. I've now released the mouse button and yet it's acting as if the mouse has been held down. So this is another way to make some of Windows native interfaces perhaps a little bit easier if you have some fine motor skill issues. Pointers, you can select additional pointers. This is one of those things that I expected them to make available in the settings app a little sooner than they have. But this goes back to, gosh, very early versions of Windows. There are various collections of pointers that you can select from. Uh, in my case, let's see, Windows Black. I'll just use Windows Black Extra Large. And you can see all of these different pointers have changed their characteristics. Now, it's not going to actually happen until I hit Apply. But in this case, this is a way of changing a lot of the different pointers that uh, Windows includes with it uh, automatically. In addition, there are pointer packs. You can create your own. You can get other pointers. It's not as popular as it once was. But this is another way to basically control what the pointers look like and how easy it is to find them on your, on your screen. Finally, pointer option, pointer speed. Um, this is the same thing we talked about earlier in terms of selecting a pointer speed, the amount of distance it'll move on screen compared to the amount of distance you actually move the pointer on uh, the desk. Nap 2 is an interesting one. I honestly don't recommend it. I find it very confusing myself. It is supposedly going to move the mouse pointer to uh, the default button in a dialog box. When a dialog box comes up, it's inconsistent at best uh, in my experience. But 
it's something to try. Hide pointer while typing is something that I think you already understand while you're typing characters. You don't want the pointer to get in the way, especially if you've selected, say, a very large pointer that can obstruct what it is you're working on. Hiding while typing means that it'll just disappear while you're typing and it'll come back as soon as you move the mouse again. Show indication of pointer when I press the control key. Absolutely. This one, I now have it turned on. Um, if I press the control key, you saw that there was a little sonar, a series of concentric circles that quickly told me where my cursor was, where the pointer was. Um, I use this all the time, all the time, because uh, I do. I lose track of where the cursor is or where the pointer is. I don't make a bigger pointer. I just use the one that's there, and sometimes my eyes just lose track. One I skipped over, and I think it's actually been on kind of, Pointer trails is another one that I also find very useful. As I move the mouse around, you can see that there's kind of a trail of mouse pointers behind it. That's another way to help you locate where the mouse pointer happens to be at any point in time. I, it's one of the things that I turn on first, actually, when I set up a new machine. And finally, I do have to point out that while this mouse properties dialog has these three tabs in it, buttons, pointers, and pointer options, you may find additional tabs depending on the software installed with your mouse, depending on the drivers that accompany it. In that case, absolutely have a look at these extra tabs and see what other kinds of options, what other kind of functionality they may offer you to make your mouse easier to use. Hope that's helpful. Hope that gives you some clue. Hope that helps you find your mouse pointer when you least expect it. For updates, for comments, for links related to this and more, visit askleo.com slash 148957. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.